Hey, welcome back to True Moto Resto. This is episode two of the Kawasaki ZX-7 restoration. And uh, in this video, more disassembly, some of the minor parts, and a lot of cleaning and getting everything ready for, uh, for painting and all that kind of good stuff. So uh, stay tuned, hope you enjoy it. <music> Okay, so I'm going to tackle the uh, getting these brake rotors off and these rotor bolts. They're very wide head on them, uh, so they get a lot of purchase on the uh, on the on the disc. And then you get there's a lot of usually um, Loctite on these things, and when there isn't Loctite, then you've got obviously chance of galvanic corrosion between the steel of the uh, bolt and the aluminum of the wheel. So I guess all of that conspires together. Oh, look at that. I gotta love that. So those five uh, came out really, really easy. Um, and absolutely no evidence whatsoever of any sort of Loctite. All right, onto the front wheel. We'll use the same recipe. If it works, we work, so. Success. Okay, so these are about, I think these are going to be the only things that I end up outsourcing. So that's going to be uh, the pipes are going to go to Media Blast in the next few days. And uh, I'm taking these wheels in to get the tires taken off. The other thing I noticed when I took the pipes apart is you can see at this end here, there's only like, I don't know, that's not even, that's maybe half an inch of pipe inside uh, the, uh, the muffler. Where it uh, where it seats in the uh, in the end of the in the end of the, the silencer, so that's uh, that's not really very much. You got to get more pipe in there than that. You always want to get as much pipe in the hole as possible, right? So I think what I am gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna enlarge this hole just a little bit, uh, not to compromise anything, but just so I can get a little bit more seated i'd like to get it kind of at least back in to there like a total of at least maybe an inch in there just uh i'm not actually gonna get down to cleaning this engine in a lot of detail today i'm just there's just so much crap on here i just find it's better to let them soak for a while in some degreaser all right, so uh, I got all the uh, the frame components stripped. Uh, I didn't I didn't video that. It was just taking brackets off and labeling and bagging and tagging everything. So um, not very interesting to watch. But anyway, um, I went through, stripped off all the grommets, all the brackets. Everything has been labeled, bagged, tagged, um, diagrammed where everything goes. It's been photographed where everything goes. I've also got. Uh, the chain starting to soak in kerosene. I haven't decided yet if I'm putting a new chain on it or not. Everything so far again looks okay. Sprockets all look good. Both the drive sprocket and the driven sprocket, although super dirty. But that'll get cleaned in kerosene as well. All right, so the pipes are back from the sandblaster. So they came out uh, reasonably clean. Which is nice. Some pitting on there, just to be expected with older rusty pipes, but all in all they should paint up okay. This is the uh, the dirty job. So basically what I've got here is a wash tub with kerosene in it and uh, I'm just basically going over the, uh, the frame and getting all the, the grime and the crap off a lot of the chain. This whole back end was completely uh, caked in it. So once all that's off with the uh, with the kerosene and the toothbrush, then I uh, basically 
basically take the rest off with uh, brake clean. So once that main frame section is done, I'll move over to the swing arm because it's filthy. Get that cleaned off. And I'll clean off the uh, sprocket and cush drive assembly. And uh, that'll be the dirtiest part done, aside from cleaning the engine. All right, so uh, shock absorber has its first cleaning. Looks a lot better. It's actually silver and black. Who knew? All the uh, frame components have been cleaned. Swing arm has been cleaned. So this is basically kerosene and brake clean. And now everything will get cleaned again multiple times with uh, acetone and who knows what else. But uh, there's a lot of cleaning to be done before you can start uh, painting this stuff because it's you know years of wax and grease and all kinds of stuff. You gotta make sure everything is off there. So chain is no longer brown. Wheels are back from having tires removed, so now we can get to cleaning those as well. It's all coming along together. Well, small things, but moving quickly, which is good. Okay, so this is just the initial cleaning. This is not final cleaning. Um, what I am gonna do to clean that valve cover, I'm gonna take it right off because I think uh, it would also be smart just to reseal that. It is weeping a little bit. You can, I could tell just from the residue of oil and everything that was kind of wicking around the edges. So I think I'll, I will take that valve cover off <clears throat> and uh, yeah, maybe I should uh, do a valve clearance check too while I'm in here, so. Okay, coat of paint on the pipes. Well, three coats of paint on the pipes, I guess. This is what I always use. Femclad high heat enamel. I've had uh, nothing but success with this stuff on exhaust pipes. <clears throat> Headers, mufflers, never ever ever had this stuff peeled off. If, uh, if the, as long as the pipes are prepped properly. And I do, I do usually heat the pipes with a heat gun before I start painting and then in between coats. It just helps it flash off a little better and I think the, the paint seems to stick. You get fewer runs and that kind of stuff. Never had a problem with it uh, affecting the way the paint cures. Okay, we're on to the, uh, the silencer repair and refinishing. So there were a bunch of rivets missing. And then there was a bunch of, so two rivets that were kind of really loose, so I pulled them out. Didn't take any effort at all. And then there were two very large self-tapping screws in there. And then there were a few other rivets that were actually missing. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six rivets that need to be replaced. So my plan is, I'm gonna to have to put a slightly larger rivet in because this is just so galled up in here. <clears throat> and then uh, I'm gonna clean some of this up ahead of time. Drill this stuff out to the right size for the rivet. And then uh, we'll pop, uh, pop some new rivets in there and then we'll move on to actually refinishing the outer skin of this muffler.
All right, so I got the uh, six six rivets replaced in here. It looks a lot better than self-tapping screws. <clears throat> so next, I'm going to uh, start wet sanding the outer skin on this. So I'm going to so I'll probably start with uh, a one thousand wet. There's a couple of rougher spots where I'm going to have to get a bit coarser. Uh, see if I can get any of the uh, there's a bit of rash right here. I'll see if I can get some of that out. Um, you can see the rash right along there. So I might try with an 800 or coarser to get some of that out first. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we'll go 1,000 and then 1,500 wet. And then we'll finish off with an AutoSol metal polish and see how it comes up. Move on to the uh, 1500. So I've, uh, I've gone from actually in the area where there was some rash here. I had to go down to 320. Um, I'm not going to get it all out because there's going to be nothing left of the aluminum if I scrub at it that long with the sandpaper. But <clears throat> this uh, I'll do the 1500, down and then we'll see how <clears throat> how it looks when we hit it with some polish. Okay, that's what I use. Autosol metal polish. Whoop, just goes out a little bit too hard. So I'm just a piece of blue shop towel to rub it on and to polish. And then I use a uh, clean rag to buff it off. So there you go, there's the, there's the difference from the 1500 wet sanding to the, uh, the auto salt side. All right, so there it is after it's been polished. It's not perfect, but it's a uh, darn sight better than it was. So the valve cover's off and I've been through and checked the valve clearances. Uh, they're all well within tolerance except for two uh, lobes of the intake valve side uh, and then there, there are two valves that are on the lower limit um, but still within the acceptable range so um, I'm going to leave that alone and then uh, we'll clean everything up in there I've, I've already cleaned the underside of this out it was kind of gooped with uh, gray gasket uh, permatex you still see some of it in there so I have to clean this gasket up and then uh, this will all get uh, resealed after I've uh, cleaned up this uh, cover. <laughs> There we go. Um, just gave it a bit of a buff and a polish. It's nothing. Uh, this thing doesn't have to be shining like you know, like, a, like chrome. But it, you don't want the corroded aluminum either. So I just basically used these uh, little buffing wheels in my Dremel tool, and then hit it with, uh, with the order saw again. There we go, back together, resealed, looks a bit cleaner. Hey, thanks for watching. This uh, concludes this uh, second episode of the ZX-7. I think in the next uh, section, the next episode, number three, we'll get around to uh, painting all of the frame. Uh, and then we'll start to get that mounted back onto the engine. And then we can move on to the bodywork after that.